Now, in the case of DB2 and ICFM, IBM Counter Fraud Management, take a look at what happens if you load a table like party, which is supposed to contain information about people and organizations. Okay, well, what is going on here with this party ID? You see, first of all, it's a primary key. See, it's made out of a big int. That's fine. And it is not null. So you can't have null values. No nulls are allowed. And then you have something here called generated. So the question is, well, what, what is generated? All right. If you're familiar with other databases like MySQL, which is now Maria, DB, or Postgres, this is essentially a, an auto increment column. So let's read about this very quickly. This, by the way, comes from a very good book called DB2 Essentials, which is excellent about uh, DB2. And it says here an identity column is a numeric column in the table, one we just saw, that automatically generates a unique numeric value in sequence for each row inserted. So a unique identifier is often used in applications to identify a specific row. Unlike sequence objects, which we'll discuss later, um, identity columns are bound to the table that they are defined on. They can, there can only be one identity column per table. DB2 can generate, and that's actually the terminology that they use is generate, the identity column values in two ways. It can either always generate the value, so the values are always generated and applications are not allowed to provide an explicit value, or they can be generated by default. And in the case of default, the values can be explicitly provided by an application, so you can give it a, a unique value. But if you don't give it a unique value, then DB2 will generate one for you. So in this case, DB2 cannot guarantee the uniqueness of the value generated because maybe your application has a flaw and then you know, it in introduces a duplicate and can cause a constraint violation. In any case, to create an identity column, you use the create table statement with the generated clause and then make sure that it contains an identity keyword because generated can also be used to generate other values automatically that are not identity columns. So here's an example, right? You're creating a table, uh, you're going to call it product number, it ha it's an integer, it's, and you're saying it's generated always as identity. So there's our generated always that we just saw a minute ago, uh, and you know there's the rest of this this portion of it. Now, what's happening is that you start out, it says, with the number 200, and you're going to increment by one. So every time you insert into that table, the 200 goes up by one. It increments by one. So he, let's do an example. You insert into product, and you give it the values of default. So this is a, this is a DB2 thing. You can actually pass it the keyword default. And in data stage, you can't. You cannot just say default. You'll get an error message. So instead, you in, in DB2, you literally just ignore it. You, you don't include this at all and then the default value will be listed in there. It'll be, it'll be automatically filled in for you. And so in this case, the very first time you, in, you insert into that table, you're going to have the number 200. And then the second time you insert into that table, again into the product, and you give it just the value of apple, so, right? So you, you didn't even give it the, the default here, and you're gonna get a 201. And that's the point of doing generate here. And again, you can see it here in tables that have something like a party ID where generated is checked. And if you can you know, move on to the next one, you'll very often see generated uh, selected. You don't see it here, but you say party group. Uh, that one is not party name. It is. So whenever you see generated, that should now make sense. And really, that s generated comes from these three different classes of SQL statements. So this is a review. You, you have data definition language, the DDL. So that's your create table, the modify, the drop, the one we just looked at. Then separately, you have data manipulation language, DML. And then you have data control language. So DML is your you know typical inserts and your updates and your deletes and your retrieves. And then lastly, you have the data control language, which lets you grant access to and privileges to parts of the database.